Hello dear students, once again we are reaching to the prelims heat which is there. Uh, along with prelims heat comes the self-doubt as to if I am completely prepared with certain subjects or not. And few of the subjects that constantly take away our sleep is your current affair oriented subjects because uh, like science and tech, environment etc. Primarily because uh, these subjects seem to be never ending. You keep on looking at your current affairs and you keep on preparing but you still find a loophole or you still write a test and you're not able to solve those questions out there. So now then it starts building up in you if you are actually prepared enough with respect to these subjects for your UPSC exam. And this is where I come in and help you out. I wouldn't call it so much so as a strategy but then I want to help you out with respect to understanding these subjects in a better manner. So, uh, let's look at this. Um, I wouldn't go so far as to convince you of the importance because if you're a serious U U UPSC aspirant, you are by now convinced of how important subjects like science and technology is. If you look at the subject rates, you will see that from 2023, Three to 2018, there's been a very consistent number of science and tech questions. Somewhere between 10 to 13 questions is there. That's easily your 20 to almost 26 marks with respect to your current affairs. Current affairs, science and tech, you can call it in any aspect at this point. So, this is important in that respect. Now, coming into the more interesting part. See, uh, I want you to understand, though we call it entirely as science and tech, uh, very in, if you observe the trends that have come in the last two, three years, you see a very clear pattern as to where the majority number of questions come from. And based on that pattern, I've arranged the science and tech topics into that uh, ascending order of questions. First, we obviously have biotechnology and health related topics. Uh, then you have information and communication technology where any of your new technology like your web 5.0, your uh, quantum computing, any of these aspects, biometric authentication related thing, digital India related aspects, all of those questions that are coming are from this chunk of area. Then only you have space and defense. Thereafter, you have energy and nuclear technology. And let me put the focus on this area again. Energy and nuclear technology over here primarily deals with all your renewable sources of energy, your solar, different kinds of, I hope you all remember the photovoltaic related questions, etc. Technology related to it. Thereafter, you have nanotechnology. Nanotechnology in the last few years, if you look, there's been an up and down one question, give or take one or one or two questions related to it. Then you have basic biology. Uh, again, the, this area seems to get ignored a lot, but understand this gets clubbed in biotech and health and a lot of time questions are asked in a very combined manner, which means that you would have a question that starts with maybe CRISPR-Cas9, but one of the statements of those questions will be about a basic biology thing about DNA or a chromosome, etc. Finally, is your science in everyday life where you might have your accelerometer type of questions or the cap or the weight of the pressure lid kind of questions which are there. What is your takeaway from this is science and tech when you look at the subject as a chunk, though you have 13 questions and it looks like a big number, here you have to learn to prioritize the important topics. The important topics on any given day with respect to science and tech are these areas, biotech health and basic biology associated, information and communication technology and space and defense. So, keep an eye out of that. Now, I'll tell you how you can break this down. So, this is something that I or uh, when we when we normally have UPSC preparation, we are in the flow of UPSC preparation. What we tend to do is once we start practicing your previous year UPSC questions, you will start finding a trend with respect to almost all the areas. So, what I have gone forward and done is uh, taken the last 10 to 15 years of science and tech questions alone. Along with that, your whatever current affairs is also happening. And based on that, there is an entire list of topics that you can study from each area. Now, for example, if you take biotechnology, you will understand that your 
topics of your genome sequencing are going to be important this year. You will also understand that your topics like your DNA, barcoding did not get asked randomly. It was asked all for a purpose. So, this is something that can be done or that has to be done where you look at the past year questions and you form a clear analysis on it. Okay. Now, I'll just show you an example taking a smaller topic in place so that, you know, it gets clearer to you. Let's take, for example, nanotechnology. Nanotechnology in our list is in maybe the fourth or fifth place. So, it's. I'll just show you how this trend has worked in the last few years. When I take nanotechnology and I look at questions of nanotechnology in the last uh, 10 years or so, I will see that the primary number, the most number of nanotechnology questions get asked from that first area, which is nanomaterials and their unique properties. Are nanomaterials um, conducting in nature? Are nanomaterials biodegradable? Are nanomaterials useful for humans? All these simple ideas about your nanoparticles. Then the most number of questions come from areas of graphene, carbon nanotubes and carbon fibers and so on and so forth. Now understand when you take a topic like nanotechnology and you sit, you are not expected to know all of nanotechnology. You are expected to know at least this because I will show you this. In the last two years, if you look, this is a 2023 question where they asked about nanoparticles, where they've asked other than those made by humans, nanoparticles do not exist in nature. Nanoparticles of some metallic oxides are used in the manufacture of some cosmetics. Nanoparticles of some commercial products which enter the environment are unsafe for humans. These are all basic properties of nanoparticles, nothing complicated. Same way if you look at it, look at this one. With reference to carbon nanotubes, consider the following statements. They have asked again very basic questions. Are they biodegradable? Are they sensor? Can it be used as a sensor? Can it be used as an artificial blood capillary? These are the different kinds of questions that I've asked. Which means that when you take a huge topic as nanotechnology, you have to or you will be able to compress it into few important micro topics which you have to know complete information about and provided you know complete information about that you will be able to solve the questions related to it which means and now i've taken and done this for nanotechnology now this is applicable for every single area for example if i take space and defense i know for a fact that with respect to space, they can ask you questions related to a remote sensing satellite and geostationary satellite. The minute comparisons of it, there is more probability for that question. With respect, when you look at it, maybe a defense related innovation might not be that important. Got it. So, this perspective should be very clear when you sit to study subjects like science and tech. Now, why else is this perspective important? This is the same thing that will fuel your current affair preparation also. Now, I'll tell you one thing. I told you about nanotechnology. I told you about nanomaterials and their unique properties which are there. Now, if you come across a news article which says that the different kinds of fertilizers which are put on to your um, green plants which are there or your crops which are there, the nanoparticles of those things enter into the human food chain or the entire food chain and it finally gets accumulated in our body. This is a new research article that would have come in your newspaper. Now, what should that click in your mind? It should click in your mind that yes, this is now a property of nanoparticle that has been discovered. The property being that it is able to cross through the entire food chain without getting degraded. It didn't get excreted or degraded in any of this. It just moved on from food chain to food chain, reached it to the humans and in the humans it got accumulated because humans are at the end of the food chain. This is a takeaway for you from there. So now you know that article is important because it deals with a unique property of nanomaterial. This is how you orient your current affair preparation also. So, putting it all together, let me sum it up for you in a very quick manner. What should you do now? See, it's very simple. 
<laughs> though though it's very ironic that i have to say it's simple if you are planning to do a certain subject you are planning to study a subject from scratch your first resource should be the previous year questions there is nothing else this is the one thing that any exam asks from you look at the previous year questions not if you can solve those questions or not that is something that will come with time but what you have to do is accumulate your knowledge from your previous year questions once you see your previous year questions create this form of a micro topic list for each area which means that when i'm saying okay today i'm going to sit and study biotechnology you should have very clear idea so i am not going to sit and study biotechnology the uh, the origin of biotechnology who form all of those things i will not be studying what will i be studying specific areas in biotechnology in a complete manner so which are those areas that has to be done will you will be understanding it from your previous year questions so previous year questions micro topic list once your micro topic list is there then you start off with your current affairs and in your current affairs whichever current affair matches with a micro topic of yours that you consider as important and make a note of it this is how you have to deal with a subject like your science and technology i hope that is clear to you i hope this works i wouldn't call it a strategy or anything this is at least a small help when it comes to dealing with a very big chunk of a subject like science and tech i hope you all will use this for your benefit until we meet next time take care and happy learning mm -hmm.